I never thought Apple was going to do this to CarPlay. Apple has just announced tons of new features in iOS 26 inside of CarPlay, and some of them are simply game-changing. And let's start off talking about widgets. Yes, Apple has added tons of widgets inside of CarPlay, and some of them are extremely powerful. The way that I've personally set mine on is this right here. I have two AI platforms integrated into my CarPlay experience, for example, ChatGBT. So now when I'm driving, I can directly access ChatGBT just by a tap. I can activate the voice command. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's your day going so far? I'm good. Are you Siri or ChatGBT right now? I'm ChatGBT. Siri is Apple's virtual assistant, but I'm from OpenAI. It's super what? cool that Apple integrated you inside of CarPlay, which is super cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's definitely cool to see the AI popping up in all these different places and making life a little bit easier and more fun. And it's not just ChatGBT. You can also access Grok and so much more. You've got a bunch of different widgets from weather, from home. Yes, you can control your smart home accessories directly with Apple CarPlay now. I can imagine how useful this will be if you've got a garage door opener. So simply by walking up your garage, you can simply tap and your garage door will open. You've got reminders as well and even kernel. So iOS apps will be directly integrated inside of kernel. So if you're personally very excited about an upcoming movie like Avengers Doomsday, you can count down and see that 549 days are left for your favorite upcoming films. You've also got tons of clock widgets, the calendar once again, upcoming events, and even music. So just by a tap, you can start playing music just like that. Now, if you want to customize your widgets, you can simply tap into settings general and then tap on CarPlay, tap on your car, and then inside of here, you can tap on widgets and there you go. You've got stack one, which is this one right here, stack two and stack three, and boom, you can simply add, tap on add widget. There you go. You can add your favorite soccer teams and keep track of the scores. But look how many there are from flighty to high coffee to home to Instagram. There are so many different things to add inside of here. If you want me to do an entire video on the most useful widgets inside of CarPlay, make sure to drop a like and I'll definitely keep that in mind. Um, a couple other things, so you can reorder your widgets just by holding on that right. If you've got an eye icon right there, that means that you can customize your widgets. And then inside of here, you can activate Smart Rotate. So depending on the day, it will rotate. So if you've got an upcoming event, it will automatically um, you know, go to your events. You've also got widget suggestions if you want, and you can activate show wallpaper. So as you can see, I just deactivated. So it all shows black, way cleaner look. Or if you want the wallpaper, you can customize it right there. And then if you don't want them at all, you can simply deactivate the showed widgets or activate them right here. A little hidden feature is if you tap inside of the widgets and then tap on add widgets, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see other. Inside of here, there's even a bunch more apps that you can choose from that are not really optimized for color play, but they still work visually. So things like, you know, Apple Find My, you can still keep track of your items and all of that. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, apart from the widgets, live activities are finally available inside of Apple CarPlay. In this case, I've actually got a flight coming up. Using the Flighty app, I'm able to track my upcoming flight. So you can see I've got info on my flight, on the time, as you can see, it's updating in real time even my gate info and the countdown on how much time is left um, for my flight. Now, apart from Flighty, there's obviously any app that supports live activities. So from timers to alarms, from maybe a soccer game that you're tracking, you can quickly glance on it. And I just can't believe one, that widgets are here or two, that live activities are here. It's such nice features. Now, Apple has also introduced Liquid Glass in iOS 26, which is the brand new design language, which looks absolutely stunning. And Liquid Glass obviously also comes to Apple CarPlay. As you can see, we've got beautifully new redesigned icons. And not only that, but the whole UI is also driven by Liquid Glass. Now, the neat thing about this is if we dive into settings and then tap on appearance, we now have a brand new settings, which is customized icons. And inside of here, Apple CarPlay will allow us to to set our icons as default, the colorful icons that we're always used to. You can also tap dark and bring dark icons to Apple CarPlay, which looks stunning. But here's what's new with Liquid Glass. You can now add clear icons inside of Apple CarPlay. You can turn them into light or darker icons right here, or you can simply choose auto. So depending if it's dark outside or not, it will shift automatically, which is super cool. 
I personally like them in light mode. I feel like this combination right here looks absolutely incredible. Now, while we're talking about appearance, you've also got a brand new wallpaper, which is the iOS 26 wallpaper. So you've also got it in dark mode and light mode as well, but it looks absolutely incredible as well as the same one as the iPhone. And then apart from that, all of the previous generation iOS wallpapers are here in CarPlay as well, including the stunning minimalistic dark one right here, which paired with the brand new icons right here. So if you customize it once again to customize icons, look at this combo right here. Doesn't that look absolutely incredible? You can do a bunch of combinations now that look very, very minimalist. By the way, quick interruption from this video, do not download iOS 26 because right now it is in beta form. Even though it's very cool and tempting to download the beta to test out all the features, the beta is just for developers. It's not for us, even though we'd like to test out all of the new features. I highly recommend you guys to wait on its September release. It will work way much better and Apple will officially finish the software. Right now, it's not finished. It is in beta. Wait, have patience. Or I guess you can just keep watching this video to discover everything that's new. We also have tons new redesign. For example, whenever somebody calls us now, instead of showing us a big full screen UI, it will show us this pill shape UI that we can simply hang up or answer the call. And then instead of just going full screen, once again, it will simply stay there with this pill UI. You know you're in a call by this green um, UI right here. And then if you tap on it, it will go full screen, which once again, this beautiful liquid glass design, which looks incredible. As you can see, you've kind of got this blurred out gradient transparent look from the wallpaper itself you can see. We also have a couple new features inside of messages. As you can see, we now have pinned conversations inside of iMessage. We've had this on the iPhone, but it was never previously available on CarPlay, and it now is. iMessage also now supports tap back. So if you want to reply quickly with a message with a haha -ha or a thumbs up, it is now simply a double tap away. There's a couple apps like Apple Maps that now support multi-touch. So on most cars to zoom in, you simply have this little icon right here to zoom in or zoom out in your screen. But now in a lot of supported cars, this one right here isn't supported, but you can now pinch to zoom, which is an incredible feature, which you know just makes a lot of sense. So as you can see, I can't on mine, but maybe on yours is. Also, Apple Maps now predicts your routes, surfaces, alerts, and delay options proactively. So if you go to home from work every single day, once you get in your car and you're about to do a route that you usually do, for example, taking your kid to ballet lessons, for example, it will recommend you, hey, do you want to take this route? Or hey, maybe there's a shorter route that you can take. You can now also report an incident inside of Apple Maps just by tapping on this right here and then tap on report. There's now a bunch of different options. For example, report a crash, a speed check, traffic, road work, hazard, or road closure. So in this case, we can, for example, add a crash accident just like that. And let's cancel that just so we don't add to that. But as an Apple Maps community, we can all let each other know of what's going on in the road. Very similar to what Waze has been doing for years now. If we're talking about redesigns, the menu bar right here on the left has also been slightly redesigned with this liquid glass design, which looks great. And now instead of three icons on most displays, it will show up as four. As you can see, I've got Apple Maps music messages on settings. Previously, I would only have three apps in the sidebar, but now there's four. Quick little break. If you're finding value out of this video, all of my videos are kind of like this. If you like Apple and the ecosystem it surrounds it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free and I'd really, really appreciate it. But by far the biggest update that we've had to Apple CarPlay apart from the widgets is the brand new, totally revamped, redesigned Apple Music. Inside of Apple Music now, instead of just showing us basically the now playing, it shows us so much stuff that we can stream of. It's basically like the iPhone version of Apple Music, but inside of CarPlay. So you've got tons of different recommendations for music, from playlists, from artists. You've even got all of the made for you playlists right here. The stations for you. You've got the find your mood playlist and so much more. And also if we tap on you, here's everything new inside of Apple Music. Once again, inside of CarPlay, which looks absolutely incredible. You've also got this beautiful, as you can see, liquid glass design, which kind of flows up here in the top. Once you tap on a specific playlist, boom, it very much looks the same as the previous generation. The up next though, the Q has also been slightly redesigned. So you can see the buttons are also have this liquid glass type of design. Also inside of your library, Apple Music now allows us to pin certain albums or playlists. So if you're someone that listens to GNX a lot or the top 100 playlist on Apple Music, you can 
think pin up to eight, if I'm not mistaken. You can do it on the iPhone and it will also mirror it instead of Apple CarPlay. So if there's a specific playlist that you always listen to on the road, it will show up right here. You'll now also be able to see your downloaded music instead of Apple CarPlay, which is a brand new feature as well, which is honestly a feature that I totally recommend you guys to use. Make sure to download albums and playlists or artists instead of Apple Music, because sometimes you're on the road and there's no service. And a lot of times you just don't have any music downloaded. So a big recommendation is make sure to download a big, big playlist that's full of music. So you've always got music accessible for you. What do you guys think about the redesigned Apple Music? I am just simply obsessed with it. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm kind of surprised that Apple went this route in terms of this design. It kind of feels like the Tesla UI and how there's so much information on screen. I don't find it distracting. I feel like the way that Apple has designed it is very intuitive, but the buttons have gotten way smaller in the UI. There's just so much crammed into here that it just honestly surprised me a lot the first time I used it. It feels incredible that Apple finally, finally did something like this in terms of Apple Music. And something else that highly surprised me is that you can now watch full on YouTube videos, Netflix, inside of Apple CarPlay using Apple AirPlay. Now there's a couple buts inside of here. First one is your car has to support it. So it's important to know that if your car manufacturer decides not to accept it, supposedly you will not have the AirPlay version of this feature. And very important, it will obviously not work while you're driving. So you will need to have your car in parked mode in order for this feature to work. Apple Podcast has also been slightly redesigned and has one new feature that I'm kind of happy about. First off, you've got this beautiful liquid design as well inside of podcasts. You've also got the new tab right here, which you can discover tons of new podcasts, including your library. Now, what's cool about this is first off, you've got a brand new feature, which by the way, inside the ecosystem, this is my podcast. If you want to listen to the entire recap of WWDC and everything Apple announced way beyond CarPlay, highly recommend this podcast. It's linked down below in the description. So you've got a brand new feature inside of Apple podcast instead of CarPlay, which is this right here. You can let me turn up the volume so you can put the turtle on and make me speak slower so you can do a, up to 0 0.5. And then if you want to make the playback way faster, you can do up to times three in terms of playback speed. So that's everything that's new inside of CarPlay in iOS 26. Let me know in the comments if you found something that I personally didn't find. Once again, do not download iOS 26 right now. We're currently in beta. iOS 26 will come later on this year, probably around September, the official release. Right now it's just on beta form. It's honestly for developers just to test out the software to see if it's working well or not. If you want to discover everything that's new in iOS 26 or watch OS 26, you can tap on these videos. Or if you learned a bunch of stuff from this video, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.